Today we'll be learning about AWS Secrets Manager. And you'll be saying like, what's the point of learning about AWS Secrets Manager? I mean, what is there to hide? Well, it could be secrets like your database passwords, your login information to specific applications, or even who is your favorite hacker. And of course, no doubt about it, it is Mr. Hacker Loy. I know that. <laughs> so let me tell you what are we trying to solve here. So the first thing that you have is say a typical website or application, whatever the case is, and behind the scene, we have something like a database. And a database would look something like this, all right? So it could be within the same server or it could be in a completely different server, whatever the case is. What we want to do here is to allow the application access and to store data into a database that is more structured or it could be unstructured data. And after which we can display all of that information within the website. So if someone is logging in, say entering username and password, we will check that directly from here. And then after which, this gives us access to those data stored within the database. But the problem lies right here. This is the part that is tricky because what happens then is that the application in the code needs to be able to store the username, all right, as well as the password in order to gain access into the database. And as a result of that, if someone, let's say hacker loy or a developer or whoever it is, try to access into the system, then they would be able to see the username and password. And because they can do that, what they can do then is that they can circumvent those application logic, gain direct access to the database. So what we're trying to solve here today is about protecting those username and password so that it is not exposed, even for people who are accessing into the source code. It actually sounds pretty simple because it sure is. Now, in terms of implementation, this is how it is going to look like. You first have the VPC, Virtual Private Cloud on AWS. And then you have an RDS server on the back end right here. Okay, so this is going to be where you store all of your data. And in order to access the data, it could be through an EC2, right, which is your virtual server, or in this case, to what to do this tutorial, we'll be using a Lambda function that is deployed into a VPC, then after which it goes into the RDS to retrieve data put in information. And at the same time, instead of placing the username as well as the password directly into the code, what we are going to do now is to be able to retrieve it from something called Secrets Manager that will be helping us store and protect all of this data. So in this case, we'll change up our Lambda function to be able to query the secrets, and then after which the secret is given back to Lambda, and then Lambda would now be able to access into RDS without exposing those credentials. Oh my, isn't that beautiful? And the first thing you want to do is to be able to boot into Kali Linux. And you're saying like, why do we need Kali Linux? The reason is because if you log in from Kali Linux, you look cooler. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So once you're in, what you can do now is you can go ahead and log in into the console. So right here, I'm going to show you the setup that we have. So the first thing we can do, so right in front of us, we are in AWS Lambda. So here we have a specific function written in Python. So as I scroll down further, I want to highlight some key important points for you. Now, if you see right here, we have something very important. This is the part where we are calling for the username, the password, and the database name. And all of this information is stored into a file. And they're going to a file called RDS config. So if I go ahead and double click onto RDS underscore config.py, you can see right here, we have the following data. We have DB username, hacker loy, DB password is password, and a DB name of example DB. So this is literally hot coded, and that's not a best practice. And if you see the rest of the code here, what we are doing now is to go ahead and connect to the database, and after which being able to pull the information out by doing a structured query language, select star from employee. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's a few things you want to look out for. So first of all, in terms of the configuration setup, you can see right here under configuration and then under VPC, we're now deploying the following VPC and we are having the subnet as well as the security groups. So you want to ensure that the security group that you have right here has access to the RDS instance. So going back to RDS, you can go ahead and click onto the VPC security groups. And once you click in right here, you'll be able to see the following information. All right, we have the inbound rules and the inbound rules right here has the following. So I go ahead and click and do edit inbound rules. So we have MySQL, all right, so this is the MySQL RDS that I've set up. And of course, in this case, we have a security group. And this security group is a security group that is attached to the Lambda function that we have so that it allows access from this source. So what we will do now is to go ahead and execute on this, All right? So once I click test, you see the execution results, right? Added three items, whatever. This is the information that was just highlighting and we're able to pull information out of the database. So pretty straightforward. 
And what we need to change up right now is to store this piece of critical information to be managed by Secrets Manager. And that's very easy. So you can see right here, I have an example. All right, Secrets name, Hacker Lloyd DB. So let's go ahead and click store a new secret. And in this case, we'll click on the credentials for Amazon RDS database because that is the database that I'm using. Wait, what? You don't believe the architecture that I showed you? I told my best friends. But don't worry, let me show you those information too. Now, jumping back to the console, all you got to do is go into RDS. All right, clicked on that. So I got a couple of databases right here. So the one that we are going to be using for today's tutorial is going to be the DB instance. So go ahead and click on the databases. And we have something right here called database two. And of course, the one at the bottom is the one where I host my website, loyliangyang.com. We have a DB identifier and we'll be using database dash two. And once you go ahead and click on it, you'll be able to see right here something very important is the endpoint as well as the port. So if you see on the on the left of the center, you'll be able to see right here, all right, we have the port 3306, we have the endpoint. So this are the two key information that you need as part of setting up the security to it. Iteration, and you'll be able to see right here, we have the database name of example DB, okay? Now going back to AWS Secrets Manager, we have the credentials of Amazon RDS database. So what I can go ahead and enter here is say the username of Hackaloy and the password of password. So that was the password I set when I initially created the RDS instance. So what we have here now, we can use the encryption key that is available together with AWS Secrets Manager. So we're using that. And then next up, you can select onto the database. So remember earlier, we're using database dash two. Click next. All right, so go ahead and give it a secret name. So I'll give the secret name for hacker loy password two. Okay, you can add in a description. And once you're done, I right, scroll all the way down. And of course, there's also something called the resource based policy that can be particularly useful if you want to share this out across multiple AWS accounts. Okay, so once you're done on that, go ahead and click next. All right, do you want to enable automatic rotation? Do you have a schedule for it? And you've been thinking like, what is the purpose of automatic rotation? I'm certain by now that you have seen tons of video on brute force attack. So the whole idea of automatic rotation is to ensure that a password is continuously refreshed. So that it makes it harder for the hackers to get that password. And the beauty of it is that it's done automatically for you. So no worries, we can enable automatic rotation later on. So scroll down further. All right, we have the rotation schedule, the rotation function is automatically created for you too. So once you're done with that, go to the bottom right, click next, okay? So review all of the settings, configuration you have placed forward. Scroll all the way down, once you're ready. Oh, wait, oh, and this is something really interesting. So in this case, we're using Python tree, but if you are writing your code in any of the other examples here, you can use them to do the call over into your secret. So in this case, we're using Python tree. So we can import Bodo tree, get secret, and so on and so forth. Once we create a secret, we can also take a look at all the sample codes that you can easily copy and paste them into your application and you'll be able to retrieve the secret. So once you're ready, scroll all the way down and go ahead and click store. And you can see right here, your secret, Hackaloy password two has been successfully stored, done. And what I can do now is can go ahead and click onto Hackaloy password two. And once we're in here, we can see the information related to this secret. So all of that is stored for us. So we even have the secret value, we have the rotation configuration, so we can always edit them. And scroll down further, all right, we have the resource-based policy that if you want to add them in for cross-account access or cross-account access management. And right at the bottom, we have the sample code that you can easily use along with your application. As part of the setup, the second important point you want to look out for is under VPC and you go over to endpoints on the left. So click onto endpoints and you can see right here, we have a specific endpoint. This is a secrets manager endpoint. And without this, you are likely going to face problems doing the call from your Lambda function because your Lambda function is in a VPC, okay? And as a result of that, you need the endpoint in order to run a call to secrets manager. So if you see right here, we have the following security groups, okay? So this has a group ID, and of course it has the VPC E, and of course it is placed into the VPC ID, and you can go ahead and click onto the security group too. And you can see right here, we are allowing the security group to be accessible from all traffic. All right, so this is something that is attached to your VPC endpoint. And the second part to this is under the policy of the VPC endpoint. So in this case, we're only allowing specific accounts to be able to run the call. So in this case, we have the action secrets manager, as well as the effect of allow on all resources. And all you got to do right now is paste the following code, which helped us get the secret. And right here, you can see 
And once we have that, we'll be able to connect to the database again. And one important point is that we have the Amazon resource name, we have the region, all right, and then after which we're getting the secret value. And once you're ready, all you gotta do is save, click deploy, all right, and once the deployment is done, if you see successfully updated the function, all right, you can go ahead and click on to test, all right? Uh oh, what's going on here? Why are we getting this problem? What's the issue? Don't panic, my friend. Mr. Hacker Law is here to save the day. What we want to do is to go over into configuration and then click under permissions. And from the permissions tab, you have something called the execution role. So this is the IAM role that is attached to the Lambda function, giving it specific permissions in the AWS account. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and click under the role name, and this brings us over into identity and access management. And this is the place for us to specify what are the permissions? What are the policies? What resources can this Lambda function access to? Okay, and what are actions that can be taken? And so on and so forth. So if you see right here, we have the following. And the most important part one is on Secrets Manager Hacker Loin. So this is a specific policy. I can go ahead and click onto it. And we want to modify this because the previous permission that I have, what I did was that I gave access to the earlier resource, but I have not yet added the new resource. So go to JSON and you can see right here, we have the following. We have the action that's available, all right, which is the secrets manager, get resource policy, secret value, describe secret and so on. And the second part is we have the resource. So in this case, what we can do now is to change up the Amazon resource name, or you can add in an additional resource for it to be accessible. So I can go back over secrets manager, copy the secret Amazon resource name, go back into identity and access management and go ahead and replace this one, okay? And what you can do now is go ahead and click review policy and then go ahead and save changes, okay? Done. Now it is being applied to the Lambda function. So if I go back into the Lambda function, all I gotta do now is go back to code and once you're ready, in three, two, one, click test, boom, that's it, game over. Oh wait, it's not game over, is that we're successfully secured our secret right now. <laughs> okay, so you have learned something extremely useful today. So it's very important that you smash the like button, turn on notifications to your subscription, so that you keep abreast whenever you get hacked. Sorry, I mean, whenever we have a new ethical hacking tutorial. <laughs>